in the next eight to ten minutes, I'll be talking about all that a general orthopedic practitioner needs to know about biopsy for bone tumors, particularly malignant bone tumors. But before I go on, what's the big deal? Well, these lesions, uh, primary malignant bone tumors are rare. Uh, a, a routine general orthopedic practitioner will probably uh, encounter one or two malignant bone tumors like osteosarcomas or even sarcomas in one year of his practice. And that is what makes these lesions very special because if you are encountering them rarely, you are more liable to make mistakes. Uh, before I go on, I would want to uh, mention two big names here. One is, uh, of course, we are never tired of mentioning these two papers by Mankin. The first one was in 1982, where he uh, sent, uh, sent questionnaires across uh, various orthopedic practitioners and what happened to patients who underwent biopsy. And he could see that unnecessary amputations were performed in 4.5% 4, 4 of patients. Uh, and majority of these were because of poorly or wrongly performed biopsies. He went on to uh, revisit the same questions and 14 years later in 1996. And he could see again that the errors, complications, and changes still remained. And a, a lot of loss of limbs and lives could be traced back to a wrongly done biopsy. Today is the time of, uh, of, of uh, exploding knowledge. All our patients are uh, quite aware as to what is best for them. And the society demands more and more from us. Before we go on to think that biopsy is an innocent or a small procedure, we should be aware of a danger lurking uh, very close by, both for the patient and for the surgeon. Jaffe in 1958 said that a biopsy is to be regarded as the final diagnostic procedure not as a shortcut to diagnosis. What he meant by saying this was that biopsy should uh, only follow a good imaging, a good clinical history, and only then the biopsy can be done and uh, 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 the correct diagnosis can be arrived at. So I'll uh, split uh, my talk into two, what to do and what not to do in biopsy. The first do is to suspect. Of course, unless you suspect, you're not going to biopsy it we have to have a low threshold for suspecting or a suspicion of a malignant bone tumor. Uh, when do we suspect? When, when the, the, the size of any swelling is more than five centimeters, it is lying deep to deep fascia, it is increasing in size over time, it is painful. And if the radiological features are suggestive of malignancy, we must subject these patients to biopsy. We have to ask any history of previous malignancy, the mode of onset, the, the aggressiveness of the progression, whether the progression has been fast or slow and family history will lead us to the correct uh, uh, differentials before we go ahead uh, for a biopsy. This patient was walking around with uh, the diagnosis for osteosarcoma on biopsy and we could see an aggressive looking lesion on the MR and also on the X-ray. All we needed to know was that the patient was, under, was having some bodybuilding exercises, a tender swelling appeared, and over time, the swelling gradually hardened with reduction in pain. This clinched the diagnosis of a myositis, and we could revisit the imaging, and with an expert radiologist, we could see. And what all, all we needed to do was follow up with X-rays and MRIs, and we can see all the, the edema has gone and it was actually only myositis needing no, no treatment. Uh, the next do is to consult. We have to be sure that we consult the right musculoskeletal radiologist, pathologist, how to send a biopsy, where to send a biopsy. And then, of course, your oncology friends uh, will come in handy whenever you plan to do a biopsy on a patient. The rules of imaging have to be followed before we go on to biopsy. All imaging should be done at least all local imaging should be done before you go on to biopsy a patient. Staging, of course, if you think it's a malignancy, you can do before biopsy. Also, before uh, jumping on to uh, the procedure, uh, which appears small and innocuous, we must ask ourselves whether a biopsy is really required. A lesion like this will quite often pop up in your practice uh, in, in uh, a patient who had some injury or some pain in the local area as incidentalomas. Most of these lesions, if we see, are, are not going to require any treatment. This was a non ossifying fibroma. The other do is to refer. If you think you are not the right person to biopsy, you should be referring this patient as we saw in Mankin's paper. Biopsies are recommended to be done only at centers where definitive treatment of sarcoma can be done. 
So we should know whether we are going to perform the definitive surgery for a patient or not. If not, then probably even a biopsy should be done at a center where a malignancy will be ultimately treated. We must use image guidance whenever required if the, if the uh, uh, lesion is not clinically palpable or apparent, and especially in patients uh, with lesions of the spine, the pelvis or sacrum, uh, an image guidance, which can be a C-arm or a CT guidance, or sometimes even PET can guide our biopsy because we might want to target areas which are more aggressive and more likely to uh, yield tissue, which will lead us to the diagnosis. Which technique to use is a very common question for all orthopedic surgeons. Well, we all have uh, uh, are, are now agreeing that, and most of my colleagues will agree that a core biopsy under local anesthesia is possible in majority of cases. It's of course an OPD procedure. It is possible to do it under local anesthesia. The least complication rates as compared to uh, open biopsy. Uh, and uh, I think the, we, we do more than 90% or even 95% of our patients are diagnosed only on a core biopsy, which is performed uh, mostly once, sometimes even twice. So what about open biopsy? Well, it should be rarely required and it is acceptable if uh, we are uh, sticking to the principles of biopsy, which I'll be coming to in the ne next few slides. In our practice, in the practice of the orthopedic oncologist, we do an open biopsy only when a large amount of material is required. Or in case of failed core biopsies, maybe we can we have repeated once or twice or even thrice. Uh, that is when we resort to an open biopsy. A biopsy incision, as is always taught during residency and remains very, very important, is that it has to be in line with the final incision for surgery, which is why you should know the final incision of a limb salvage surgery for any bone tumor. And it is important, again, to re-emphasize that the biopsy ideally should be done at a center where limb salvage surgeries are routinely done. This is for everyone to see on internet uh, and in, in Malawa's textbook. Uh, distal femur can be approached both medially and laterally, similarly proximal tibia and the shoulder. Most of the biopsy uh, route that you take will depend on where the soft tissue component is lying and also while avoiding uh, contaminating a joint or an uninvolved bone or a neurovascular bundle, you will also always want to stick to a single muscle compartment. So if it's a lesion like this lying, to, lying posterior to the distal femur, we will avoid taking a posterior root contaminating neurovascular bundle. We'll avoid taking a transarticular or root or root to the joint. So we'll usually approach it either medially or laterally without contaminating much of uninvolved bone. If we have to do an open biopsy, we must avoid raising flaps. I always say an open biopsy is a, is, should be like a big needle biopsy. If you're using a curate or any other instrument, make a, a, a sharp, neat cut through a single muscle compartment. Having read your imaging well before doing biopsy really helps. When you have done a sharp and direct uh, approach, you have breached a single compartment, you enter and take tissue out just like you would do with a needle. You should not be using much of uh, retractors. It's not really required to have a good look at the tumor and the, the, uh, the flaps should be a minimum. A good hemostasis is very important because we don't want a big hematoma that is contaminated. That may complicate related to surgery. Drain is best avoided. If at all you have to put a drain, it has to be distal and in line with the incision of the open biopsy. Suture placement is again leads to a lot of loss of skin sometimes and uh, a bite close to the open biopsy incision really helps. We also should read the imaging, uh, maybe sit down with the radiologist friend and try uh, biopsying representative areas. A soft tissue component is just as good as the bone. We don't need to enter the bone if there is a big soft tissue component. We have to avoid cystic and necrotic areas when we are planning a biopsy. What about FNAC? Of course, FNAC is a very uh, easy to do procedure in the OPD. Uh, a lot of pathologists them, do it themselves. But uh, we must say here that FNAC is an unreliable procedure for a primary diagnosis of a primary bone tumor. This patient had a lesion in the proximal tibial epiphysis and an FNAC was ordered, which showed a giant cell rich lesion. The patient curatage, thinking it was a giant cell tumor, and lo and behold, it was actually a giant cell rich osteosarcoma. Now the patient and the surgeon both are in trouble. What about excision biopsy? We'll reserve it for the rare case where we do not actually need a biopsy and we 
can uh, we need to take out a lesion such as an as an osteochondroma where we are sure that uh, it is an osteochondroma without even a biopsy sometimes a small bony or soft tissue mass which is excisable with wide margins without much functional or anatomical morbidity again can be subjected to an open uh, an excision biopsy but we have to beware of the mimic whenever we are biopsying uh, an osteoporotic fracture uh, um, uh, a myeloma mimicking osteoporosis a giant cell rich osteosarcoma mimicking giant cell tumors uh, and as dr shriram said the lenjectatic osteosarcomas of gondosacs can mimic their benign counterparts so we have to be aware of these entities to suspect and to let the radiology and pathology friends know that these are the mimics that you are keeping in mind a few slides on what not to do when you are going about doing a biopsy this is again very important number 1 is please is you nothing you should not presume that a lesion is what you're thinking it is unless you have a good proof the sacral mass was treated with anti tubercular treatment for 9 months and it all it needed was a small needle biopsy to prove that it's actually giant cell tumor it needed treatment and not att we should not mix biopsy with fix fixation or with curettage because this may ultimately either turn out to be unnecessary or may it may actually complicate or contraindicate limb salvage this 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 uh, distal metaphyseal lesion in the femur was curated by the unaware orthopedic surgeon and also nailed for stability well he achieved stability but the histopathology showed osteosarcoma and we could see there is a huge recurrence there and uh, this is what resulted in an uh, in a limb which otherwise was quite uh, amenable to limb salvage again uh, repeating but uh, repeating because it's very important don't biopsy if you're not sure that you are the right person to biopsy a biopsy of a pelvic osteosarcoma through the gluteus maximus led to a hindquarter amputation because the whole flap was contaminated a similar case where the biopsy was done rightly resulted in, in internal hemipelvectomy and uh, salvage of the limb avoid drains as i said if possible but if at all you have to put drains after your biopsy you have to put them in line with the incision and distal to the incision again do not divide tissue amongst two labs it is uh, not a good practice because sarcomas are heterogeneous you might end up uh, sending one uh, type of tissue to one lab and the other type in the other lab if at all you have to have a second review send the whole thing to one lab and uh, get slides and blocks from there and send to another lab if you want where to send is very important be sure of the lab with all due respect we have very busy pathologists in, in the peripheral centers but uh, quite a few pathologists will not be seeing many bone and soft tissue tumors if you think your pathologist uh, may not be that well versed with these lesions seek more opinions send the blocks elsewhere to a more expert pathologist uh, and this particularly is important when you think uh, the clinical and radiology uh, picture is not matching with the diagnosis on pathology again don't traverse multiple planes or compartments when you are biopsying avoid transverse incisions or those which are not in line with uh, the uh, ultimate uh, limb salvage surgery scar avoid multiple scars if you think one scar has failed to give you a diagnosis try and use the same scar to biopsy a different area so if you see a skeletal lesion you might be tempted to cure it and bone graft it you might start thinking what on earth it can be you might uh, uh, want to biopsy and at the same time fix it and you might want to start att and see what happens well only the second uh, step is the right step especially in today's times and if you once you start thinking you investigate further you look at the clinical the biochemistry the radiology and then you think whether this lesion merits a biopsy first and a proper diagnosis before you embark upon treatment the sequence has to be a careful clinical evaluation analysis of the imaging studies and then biopsy and it can never be uh, from clinical straight away to biopsy doing a biopsy and then going about uh, imaging is a very very bad idea the diagnosis of all must fit and as jaffe said diagnosis is the end of a, the diagnostic uh, the biopsy is a, the end of uh, a, the diagnostic uh, procedure and not the beginning diagnosis has to be questioned when any three any of these three do not match to conclude uh we have to keep a high index of suspicion for bone tumors we will not picking up many malignancies early enough if we do not start thinking about them being a real possibility we have to refer early if malignancy suspected in case we think we are not at a center which, which treats malignant bone tumors we should biopsy only if we are sure we should be doing it 
and we should avoid treatment on presumptive diagnosis. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Akshay, for such an informative lecture.